Yeah, shout out Mojav, Mojave, Mojave. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm my bad, bro. I'm my bad. Shout, shout y'all out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do O Block first. Let's get off relationships. That's enough. Like, like who, the, who the wants to be in a relationship, bro? Let's go to O Block. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I say, it's me, JC, and Buck. Play with us, you fuck. Put his body in the trunk, then we take him to the dump. And they know we play for keeps, and they know that we ain't sweep. Grab a brew, we finna sweep. This is gonna make me sad, so I low key, like, this wasn't even probably the best one to pick. O Block finna clean the streets, boy, you better grab a heat or get put up on a T. Put your name back RIP, or your name get turned to weed. In the racket, ain't no pad, any state we on your. No matter where, nickel flat. Fuck the. Uh, we ain't goofy, goofy do that crash. We gon' spin and spin again. We gon' hit our last friends. We gon' show him we ain't playing. We gon' leave him where he stand. That's really, yeah, that's all I want to be, it's successful. Right, big goof ass, man, check it out. No, 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 it's crazy because when you in this situation or in this predicament, like you, even if you don't want to do it, you got to. Like if I get pressed like this, I'm trying to think of a, like, because I would like to think there's no, there's obviously a very disrespectful way to cover O Block and put it out there. Knowing his track record, you know what I'm saying? I think that he's sensible enough to do it without trying to make it you know what i'm saying weird and malicious but we gonna see because i might see something that's unforgivable but at the end of the day if you get pressed like this you don't have a choice like i would this would have caught me off guard this would have caught me off guard i'm not gonna lie to you bro granted i wouldn't have went here i would never go to o-block by myself and and try some shit like this but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throw up block. Everybody throw up We're no. here in the uh, Parkway Gardens housing I'm cool. development in Chicago, otherwise known as O Block. A uh, 24 building complex on the city's south side. It's where Michelle Obama grew up, and it's also where drill music began around 10 years ago. This is Boss Talk. He's been here for a super long time, so he's going to take us back to the very beginning where it all started. But right now, you Y'all ain't got no fucking. Damn. That just made me sad. We got mug shots in place of baby photos. On the 44th, you in one of the gutterest building in the block. This motherfucker be the last building to get cleaned up. Oh, it's a roach. See y'all in the project. See that roach? That's a baby roach. That's gonna get bigger. That's gonna get bigger. Smoking the roach and killing the rat. This bitch be dirty as hell. This building be dirty. I'm from this building. Bro, I used to be one of the motherfuckers to piss in the hallway and on the elevator too. I ain't gonna lie. My mom in the bathroom, I'm gonna be the one bathroom in here. I'm going to piss in the hallway. I still won't touch the buttons on the elevator. I'm straight knuckles. Cause you think there might be pee on it? Spit, pee, ink. I used to do all type of shit to the elevator. I ain't taking no shit though in here. True that! True that! Come on, come on! Love you, my nigga. Love you too, boy. I'm going to true that. And true that. Man, I'm man. My nigga, true that. I ain't like a nigga in here, bro. Hey, everybody, what's up? How's it going? That's nice. GDK, 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 GDK. Come on. GDK, 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 GDK. No, 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 we started the word drill with our music. Like, nigga walking out the fucking hallway with a sippy cup. Like, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to figure out how to drink this liquid. Folks came out, folks, folks, the youngest GDK member, he, he invented that shit. To you, like, what is drill music? We started the word drill with our music. Like, let's, let's do a drill. We started that shit. Like, how would you explain drill music to someone who doesn't know? Um, music that make you want to kind of get outside and go just be outside, you feel know that? Makes sense. No, but I feel what you're saying. You get on going. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it turn you up. It give you adrenaline. Drill music is something that I mean. <laughs> Why did they do that? <laughs> what the fuck? Why did they do the transition like that? Like the dude wasn't explaining it enough, or like he wasn't explaining it well enough as the fucking creator of it, and then like. Let me give, let me bring it to somebody else who knows how to explain it when the fucking maker of it is right here. 
I don't know. That was just a crazy transition. And in the grander scheme of things, you could see it as, you know, a hyper-violent offshoot of trap generally that, you know, sort of like came out of a very specific area. That was I bad. Drill music. That one was bad. That yeah, one was bad. It's, it's violent, but mainly fiction. That was bad. It's like realistic fi fiction music. So like, this why I shot my video, 4K Troll, shot it right here in this park. Right here where you standing that I shot it right here. The uh, the lyrics are pretty intense in that song. Grab my Glock, then I grab my mask and hop out, then I blast. But he ain't like, he pulled out his strap and started shooting back. It sound like it's compact to my, I got a double back, it's finna crack. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, I, I giggle because of the way he, in, you know, the way he interpolated him into the fucking, into the video. I would say integrated. I don't like interpolate for that. The way he integrated him into the video just now was just kind of crazy. After he was talking to the actual niggas who like actually make the shit. Like that's kind of crazy. You just don't do that is all I'm saying. Like his explanation of it could be fine. I'm just saying that that's not the, that's not the right edit. You know what I'm saying? It's all entertainment. You see what I'm saying? It's all for, for like the people. Like cause like music nowadays is all about like controversial shit. Drama. Drama really makes money. Back to that breaking news live from Chopper to a mass shooting. At least six people shot. This all happening at 65th and King Drive in Parkway Gardens. So what was it like growing up in o Block? We had to grow up. We had to really grow up and grow up fast. All that little boy shit went out the window. Everybody around this bitch got PTSD. Everybody around this bitch seen somebody die. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we had a brotherhood that can nobody come between. We, we not let nothing happen to none of us. Malo couldn't even beat up OD. We gonna fuck them all the ass up, boy. You better not put your hands on folks, boy. Fuck them and pull a pipe out. Hold on. And it's the same way. Like, we got each other, boy. Oh, girl, we ain't got no deities on BDN. What, what can you tell us about the year uh, 2011? 2011? I, I, uh, I experienced, like, my first, um, first friend get killed. Uh, my, my best friend, OD, he died in 2011. In 2011, a Parkway Gardens resident named O.D. Perry, which Oblock's now named after, was murdered, gunned down just outside the gates of Parkway Gardens. What was one of your favorite memories of you and uh, O.D.? You know, man, I got a lot of them bitches on O. <laughs> he had this crazy ass doll named 50, bro. Oh, Jay Money, bro. I was scared of that motherfucker, bro. Oh, oh, uh, like, play with the dog. I'm like, boy, I ain't playing with that motherfucking dog, bro. Y'all tripping. Motherfucker run up on me. Ah, blah, 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 it burn. Ah, it's your bitch ass song. Oh. Right now, to this day, I still don't play with people's dogs. I don't give a fuck if that bitch is a chihuahua. Bro, get your dog before that bitch die. I'm gang. OD's murder was allegedly in retaliation for the murder of Shondale Tuka Gregory, a rival gang member who lived just a few blocks away on 63rd. Those are the sad years of my life. I should not have watched this video, bro. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus, bro, stop. When would, it's just pictures like these. I have so, I got so many I got so many pictures with this, this little font. When you took the little old digital camera, you take the picture, it's got the little date on it. And there's so many pictures I have of these where old friends of mine just, they just dead. They just gone. Taking pictures just like this, doing something, having a good time at a party, in front of the school. And like, this is the last thing, like this is the last time niggas who, you know, I grew up with or people just stop at 15, 16, 17 years old. And then like, this is the last, this is, I don't even get to see you as an adult. I can't even think or imagine what you would be, what you would look like, who you would be at my age. I'm older than you now. And you used to be older than me when we grew up together. Like it's fucked.
As far as I hear, just hear my first child and everything. I'm really like traumatized. Like, I ain't know if was I supposed to crash out or fall back. And my mom used to be talking to me like, man, you got a daughter. Don't be like these niggas, don't die. How many uh, friends do you think you've lost since then? Over 10 dead on this game. Like, two motherfuckers a year. I swear to God. Owen Platoon and motherfucking 11. Trout and Whitey and 12. We got LA and J Money and, and motherfucker died in 13. My, my crowd gone. Hey, I gotta hang with the fuck them. I gotta hang with the fuck them. I ain't gonna stunt. When, when, it seemed like when folks died, folks' career took off. When old passed away, folks took that shit to another level. Chief Keith and Dirt and them came out. They lit this bitch up, you feel me? So it's like. Shortly after Odie's murder, a close friend of his decided to make his first song, which would serve as an O Block anthem, to celebrate the life of Odie and this Shondale Tuka Gregory. This friend was named Keith Cozart, aka Chief Keith. This bitch get to going up. The block busting. I just got out. I get out. I see Patron and White White. Fools got cocky as hell. I'm looking. I'm like, how the fuck y'all let OD get killed? Patron put his head down. He like, man, go take your daughter upstairs. I'm gonna holler at you. I take my daughter up. I remember Inky D them came up there. Deep as hell. Everybody coming eight. Happy as hell. Fat Mac and Stu get to showing out. They get to fight. Hey, hey, Fat Mac. You remember I got out of jail? You want Stu start fighting that day? Him and Stu get to fight. Hey, phone them like, man, y'all showing out because folks just got out. Uh, uh, Dirk and Reese come see me. Oh, I'm, all right. I'm like, I'm feeling love like a motherfucker. I'm damn. Folks don't, folks don't come rap with me. I'm like, I fuck old guy. How the fuck old guy? You know? You no, know, they rapping with me. Boom, 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 boom. We talking all us and that bitch crying now. I'm like, damn. I just got out, we all crying right now. I'm like, the fuck, I'm fuck that, we ain't crying, we out here, we get outside. In the next two years, Chief Keef would go from a young O Block rapper to one of the most commercially successful rappers in the world, with hits like I Don't Like and Hate Being Sober. Chief Keith made it more like global. And before you knew it, white America was doing the hokey pokey to murder music and unknowingly singing along to the anthems of an actual gang war playing out in real time. For a year, the conflicts of Oblock were a mystery to the general public. That was until one man came around and exposed the inner workings of Chicago's gang. Now I'm just gonna get frustrated. <laughs> Come on, man. <sighs> Gang war to the world. So 2010, 2011, I'm in college and I'm doing commentary about hip hop. I had like, you know, some hot takes about like Kanye and Drake and stuff like that at the moment. So I was kind of gaining an audience. And I remember when the drill scene popped off and I remember doing a video on Keith and I was like, I love the music. So I'm reading the comments and everyone was like, Yo, you're not telling the full story. Okay, because like I I'm going in there and I'm doing a quick video and I'm like, yo, all his ops is dead. You know what I mean? He's dissing them. It's over. You know what I mean? Like these guys, we don't even need to know their names. And everyone was like, well, no, they're not dead. And actually the guys who, who he's dissing, just kill his guys. They were talking about people like Lil J. See, the point is, though, you, you would have never had to explain that. You would have never had to explain that this op killed this op or this op got this op out the way if you just talked about what you liked about the music, the song yourself. Like going over and when you dive into the extra shit. It's like, you're not supposed to be the spokesperson or the voice for, you know what I'm saying? That type of thing when you're not that. That's why I end up looking weird. Is that still on YouTube either, by the way? Like that War on Chirac series, is that still there? Like, did I ever get taken down or, like, removed? That's crazy. They were talking about like the FBG gang. Nigga, fuck T Roy and OD them dead bitches. I'm like, yo, nobody knows these people, like, respectively, because they don't have a hit song. 
Chief Keefe is going crazy with his songs. So I made this page called The War Shot Racket, and I started covering basically just constant feuds that were happening. It's your boy DJ Academics, and now information has come to my... There is no way that's him. That's what... Ain't no way that's his voice, bro. My attention. Now y'all know I call little Reese. There is no way that was his voice. I thought that was a parody just now. There is no fucking way that's his voice, bro. Ain't no. Oh, it's pitched. It has to be pitched, right? It's your boy DJ Academics, and now information... That is fucking insane. Who would? Shit has come to my attention. Now y'all know I call Lil Reese the Chirac Grim Reaper. Well, pretty much because every time you look through his mentions, you see a bunch of dead niggas. CBS Chicago is reporting that a 15 year old boy, AKA Lil Nick from Six Hunter, was shot multiple times and then he was brought to a hospital where he was pronounced dead by the Cook County. All right, bro. Never fucking ends. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. His war in Chirac series went viral, and the fans were now aware of the ongoing Chicago gang war, particularly as it pertained to the rappers involved. And fucking instigating it while the only while the only beneficiary is the people who are covering it that live hundreds and hundreds of miles away from it. How many people do you think have died in the war in Chirac? Thousands. This past weekend, at least 52 people were shot, eight of them killed. In the following years, between 2011 and 2020, 5,518 people were murdered in Chicago. To the amusement of self-proclaimed Chiracologists, who created a Reddit page, which now has over 175,000. Why is this still up? Members. But I'd never seen a place where life was valued less than Chicago. To this day, I've never been to Chicago because of that. I feel like things bad everywhere. Things just bad in Chicago because like, this shit came like a movie to people. Like when it first got famous, people started like, it was like we was characters. Like damn, like you got me look like an assassin. Drilling itself is an energy that once people latch onto that shit and you become invested in the story, it's like a soundtrack to a movie and, and it sounds bad to say, but it's a soundtrack to a movie that you're watching. Oh my God, bro. Just, what, how do you, how do we get here, bro? You can't, you can't, You can't remove the context of a real human being and put them into the context of a fictional story just to fit this analogy. A story is what it is. It's fiction. Well, not all the time. But movie. It's like these, it's like these, it's like there are these buzzwords that are just geared to, to piss you off. You got a nigga who lost his life or he's actively in a gang or some shit and a nigga come around talking about, yo, your life a movie. Huh? What do you mean? You can't push pause and rewind and fast forward and delete scene and all. You can't do that. You know, I'm looking at this not like on some voyeuristic, like, yo, oh shit, this is like entertaining. I'm like horrified. What I try to do is satire, hoping people could look at them like, that looks ridiculous. These dudes, like, they're disgusting, right? People took it and they ran with it. Every ran with what? You can't talk down to a whole community of people that you profit off of and expect niggas to be cool with you. What do you mean? How do you satire? How do you put satire on real life in, in, in this situation? I don't understand that. Like, what do you mean by that? You're trying to talk down to niggas who you profit off of. Who are you telling this to? Who are you telling, which niggas are you trying to prevent from being like this? Because if this is a preventative measure and you're trying to put them out there so you can tell people not to be like them, the audience that you've cultivated never would watch a YouTube video about it. They're either in it or they're not. And the niggas that are watching the videos about it are clearly not in it. So who are you preventing from being like this? I don't understand. I don't get it. There's no reason or why. It's just, 
it's just I'm a benefit. I'm a benefit, and that's it. I want to hear the, the, the reasoning, though, because I don't get I it. I thought that people would be like, yo, this is some sick shit they loved. We have a... They didn't... It's not even that they loved it. What could you teach a nigga who's not from that environment about not to do something who that he wouldn't do anyway? You're going to tell somebody from O... From, not from O Block, don't act like these niggas from O Block when they're not from there. They know. Who are you telling? I, I don't get it. bloodthirsty audience, especially music. The more people die, when someone gets locked up, their streams are through the roof. Music sales, whew, going through the roof. Trust me. I was a driving force in against some of these guys, other than Keith, eyes and attention and ears to some of the, their stuff. Did you feel responsible for like inflaming gang tension on the streets? By covering things? Hell no. But let me oh take this account of Oh my god, bro. Come on. You gotta be real with yourself, man. I don't even have a problem with DJ Academics. It's just more like a... you. This is a moment for you to reflect and be like, you know what? That was not a good thing for me to do at all. If I am of the... Look, 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 listen to what he just said. Listen to what he just said. I was a driving force in against some of these guys other than Keith. Eyes and attention and ears... I was a driving force in getting some of these guys eyes and attention and ears. How can you at the same time say, no, I wasn't responsible for instigating or inflating any of it if I helped platform it? What are you saying? To some of the, their stuff. The, and there's, again, you can, there's nothing wrong with, all right, now I have a clearer perspective about the situation and now I can look back on this and be like, you know what, that was fucked up. That was fucked up. Because, like I said, most niggas that look at DJ Academics today don't have a problem with him like that. But in that regard, you just got to be real with yourself. Be, be, be honest with yourself. with yourself. Did you feel responsible for, like, inflaming gang tension on the streets by covering things? Hell no. Nah. But l let me take this account of this. said, hell no. Nah. They say, yo, well, you gave people nicknames. <laughs> and when you gave someone a nickname, oh my God. some other guy who is going to start killing more to try to get that nickname. And I'm like, I don't believe I caused any murder, but if you, if my videos, because they were popular, instigated any two parties, I'll take blame for that. But motherfucker, if you picked up the gun, I'm not taking blame for what you did. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. He just said the same thing. <laughs> you rephrased it to answer it a different way, but yeah, sure, yeah. He just asked you the same thing you just said. When I started covering Warren Chirac, niggas was dying every day already. I was on Twitter watching people bleed out. And I was like, I can't believe And that could be fine. That could be true. It's not fine. That could be true. You just add it. Nobody said you created the problem, but you definitely didn't help it. This is like people getting shot like dogs, bleeding down, everybody filming it. And then you go on social media and everybody say, I'm smoking on the pack. So you got to take blame for, for you doing that. The parents got to take blame for not being in the kid's life. The cops got to take blame for them basically just like throwing their hands up in the air and saying, let everybody kill each other. Like these motherfuckers, like everybody wants an easy scapegoat. Listen, stop acting like a bitch ass nigga and just fight, bro. Leave the pipes alone, fight, 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 fight. fight. Oh, it's so fucked up now. It's like a 12 year old just said, ah, oh, pop you. So nigga, did you, okay. Maybe he was joking. Maybe, yeah, maybe he was joking. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm overdoing it. Maybe I'm too serious right now. Maybe I'm just too serious. Did you not just tell a baby to throw up a gang sign? Like, unless we trying to recontextualize or reframe what gangs are supposed to mean, like, we, I don't know, bro. You either got to do away with the ideology or stop trying to infect, you know what I'm saying? The newer that's coming up. You just can't, you... I just find it you you can't you can't develop rules for certain shit when there are no rules. I know it's easy to say stop being a bitch and just throw your hands up, but you know how many niggas don't think like that? I'm not telling my nephew as he grows up, don't be a bitch, throw your hands up, and every other little nigga got a gun around him. I'm not telling him that. Granted, I would just like to not, you know, have him in the environment, but like Protect yourself. Of course. 
develop self defense. Cool. But I'm not telling him that, bro. Not a 12 year old. You like, bro, just fight him. No, that's not happening. Yes, that's good advice, but that's not happening. I'm not saying it's an excuse. I'm not saying it's an excuse. But it, it's not going to be as simple as put him up, put him up. That's all I'm saying. Why do you think that happens? Because the yeah, motherfucker think it's about being a shooter or a killer. Music played a part. But music won 100% why everybody doing this. It's your fucking mama and your fucking daddy. You get what I'm saying? Sure. That's it's a your part. mama and your daddy, bro. It's not, it usually be your environment, but it's your mama and your fucking daddy. It's about how you getting raised, blood. Like, raise your fucking kids right. Oh, oh. I don't think it's drill music at all. I promise you. If, if we was to take drill music away right now, and it be regular hip hop, it's still gonna be the same type of violence. Everybody wants to be, everybody wanna be a character now for the internet. On social media, beefing, making threats, making crazy comments, like going on live, you know, it's like, you know, waving the gun in the fucking camera. Um, you know, it's like, it, it's, it's, it's almost like a competition to see who can push it the furthest and get the most attention. Because, you know, th there is a fair amount of clout chasing and, you know. But I don't, I don't think it's about get the most attention though, because it's just, it's like this shit has been happening for a long time anyway, and then when it finally gets platformed, it's like now it's getting pushed to new limits. When these aren't new limits, these are just things that have existed for a long time, and then they're being introduced to people who've never seen them before in their entire life. So now it's like, oh my god, this is crazy. Now these these are two completely two like like two completely different situations. But what let me know what people were used to and introduced to a long time ago, well, not too long ago, was when Will Smith smacked the shit out of Chris Rock on stage. Of course, people can say it's wrong or whatever the case is, but when that situation occurred, it allowed me an, an uh, insight into what people were used to, how many people had seen something like that. Of course, not at the fucking Grammys, but just in general. I can't believe this would ever happen. Most regular people, they look at that, they're like, okay, nigga got slapped, whatever the fuck, get the fuck over it, we be done. That's not a crazy situation. It's a regular situation that happened on a platform where niggas aren't used to seeing it. But the other shit isn't new. It's not groundbreaking. Oscars, you're right. Oscars. The other shit is not new. It's not groundbreaking. It's not pushing the limit. It's just been happening. And you just now seeing it. That's all. That is a toxic element. In that way, do you think? I don't think it's about clout. Sometimes it's about clout, but very rarely it's about clout. You, the niggas who aren't used to seeing it are just seeing it. The That's all. Is like bad for society. No, because the thing is like the the realities of what is being discussed in that music was, was there before the music was there. The music is just an expression of that. It's just a reaction to that. Fair. Like when you're talking about inner city gun violence, you're talking about poverty. You're talking about poor education systems. You're talking about systemic issues, shit way beyond music. Systems. You're talking about like low access to food. You're talking about low economic opportunities. Those are the kinds of solutions that you would need to apply to that situation. If you could go back in see. time, would you make War in Chirac again? You know, you know Nintendo I'm going, was it appropriate? Trenches I, of Connecticut. I wouldn't do it again just because um, I think we're dealing with mental illness in Chicago. And when you see people are kids, these people who are doing murders, like Ronald number nine was like 17, doing drills and all that type of shit. It's easy to be outraged. Wait, 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 what did you say? I didn't even, I was reading the chat. You know, I've grown the kinds of solutions that you would need to apply to that situation. If you could go back in time, would you make Warren Chirac again? You know, you know, I've grown, was it appropriate? Probably wouldn't do that again. I wouldn't do it again just because, um, I think we're dealing with mental illness in Chicago. And when you see people are kids, these people who are doing murders, like Ronald. No, 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 no. This is just the reason for you to take accountability on why you wouldn't do it. That's it. That's it. Number nine was like 17, doing drills and all that type of shit. It's easy to be outraged and also say, damn, how could you guys take a life so easily? But also you got to think about the cycle of mental issues that they're having, the trauma that they're suppressing. After the success of the War in Chirac series, Academic's formula was replicated hundreds of times, creating a concentrated YouTube algorithm. <laughs> he threw Trap Lord Ross in there. I just, I immediately, I saw his fucking, <laughs> I saw his fucking name, bro. Ah, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. It turned gang drama into an online mega industry. One of the channels in this algorithm is called No Jumper, which is quite different from the war in Chirac, but nonetheless features many interviews with gang related rappers. Do you even know about gang shit when you first moved to Florida? When did you actually become a 5-5 Crip? 
you are widely known to be associated with the Hoovers. Some of the dudes who got caught up for this murder are like actual rappers who have videos out with, with many, many thousands of views. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> oh shit, man. That is hilarious. I will. I will. I will. I'll watch that. Because I didn't watch that yet. And I wanted to see why why they went off on him. Uh even though I do I get why they why they went off. I saw a little clip of it on Twitter, but I'll watch a little bit of it. Again, like you say, a lot of the stories are hypothetical, but in this this one, you actually mentioned that a specific rapper from Chicago called a girl six times while you were hanging out with her. Right. It just, it's just there's a way. Oh, there's two things that I just. Well, I'll talk about that when we get to the clip. But I just, if I got the opportunity to like, I don't know, interview Chief Keith or some shit like that, bro. Not even Chief Key, but like, I just this is just not the the question that I would ever think to ask. It's just why that? I don't get it, bro. It's round. You see, Dirk Dirk would be a good, but see, Dirk is to a point where it's like. Some of these dudes, I've seen interviews where the interviewer purposefully tried to ask someone to say something about something because they knew they weren't interview trained or they weren't like media trained. So they ask certain shit because they know it's easier for that person to kind of implicate themselves or to get themselves in trouble. And I don't think sometimes they do it maliciously or on purpose, but it's like some, some of these grown men, they kind of like react like teenagers do on the internet. And it's like, I've been listening to this, I've been hearing this movie, I've been seeing this movie the whole time. I want to know how the directors did that. And it's like, no, this is a real life nigga in front of you. you know what I'm saying the okay. shit just be going, man, you know. So I went on the podcast and spoke to the host, Adam22, about the ethics of producing monetized gang content. Do you think drill music is uh, bad for society? Yeah, definitely. How come? Because people are in gangs killing each other and making songs about it and making it sound super cool and even me as like a 38 year old fucking white man i listen to it and i think that it sounds kind of cool and I, I struggle with that but definitely i think it's probably as much as i like listen to it it's probably got to be a net negative for society right Jeez. just just the romanticization of violence yeah yeah dirk 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 is it dirk g herbo some a couple of these dudes are like really really easy interviews because they've been damn near everywhere been interviewed by who fucking knows you know what i'm saying so it's really, I'm not saying it's easy, but they're, they're, they're a lot more seasoned. They know how to, you know, keep themselves out of trouble and answer some, I guess, quote unquote, hard hitting questions. But I don't know if I had to interview someone, I don't even think, I don't even want, that's why I would never want to interview someone. Cause it's like, why, what would I ask? I would ask some shit, but like, I'd have to be so anal about the questions that I'd ask. It, it would take so long to get a decent, so like to like a good interview off. And me feel comfortable about putting it out. It's in general. Yeah, I just wouldn't interview street niggas. That would be easier for me to do, too. I wouldn't interview any street niggas. That's all. When did I say anal? Oh, I did. No, wait. Chill, chill, chill. You know what I mean when I say anal. Chill. Do you think you help? Like, some of y'all literally, like, unironically don't know what anal means. And it's actually fucking me up. <laughs> Make it look cool. Mm, I don't know. I feel like when they're on a beat with a fucking 808 going crazy and they're able to like rhyme and make less sense that that probably is like when it sounds coolest because they don't really talk about that in interviews right i mean most of like the, all the chicago like gang members or whatever it's like the amount of like street shit you're gonna be able to get them to talk about in an interview is pretty minimal in comparison to the stuff that they're essentially saying in their songs it just must be crazy because like you talk to so many people who like i gotta watch this interview have died recently because even though he's like a troll kind of like uh i forgot his name but the head of channel five oh like, i could tell he's he's genuinely inquisitive i can tell that like you're what you're like he genuinely wants to know xyz andrew okay i could tell like the last person to interview um fbg cash 
right there. His name's on the wall. Yeah. Mm. Do you feel any responsibility for like inflaming like gang beef by having so many gang members use this platform to promote themselves? No, because I mean, I feel like this is a hip hop platform that long ago has kind of been clear to me that that's more or less the, the gist of what we're doing, you know? Like there was a long time where I didn't do any street shit. You know, in the beginning it was mostly like SoundCloud type stuff and more like avant-garde you know internet shit we've gone more in that direction and like a lot of like it's also the direction rap's gone in did you say avant-garde in in soundcloud in the same sentence that soundcloud era was like what 2016 to 2018 mainly 2017 that was kind of crazy though it's, it's <laughs> tough to crazy. get away from the fact that the fans just want what they want you know, as a content creator, you kind of have to follow the incentives to a certain extent. It's just been taken to the point where the fans like want this shit to be real. They don't want to hear you say, I'll, I'll shoot you if, you if you come near me. They want to hear you say, so-and-so from the other side got killed because he fucked with me. Like the fans are really drawn to that kind of immersion, I guess. Whenever you grew up here, did you guys spend a lot of time in other parts of Chicago? Like, did you ever go like downtown or to other areas or were you mostly here? I spent a lot of years inside this gate. Have you been to a, like a Cubs game or anything? No. You guys want to go to the White Sox game with us? Yeah, yeah, yeah we go. Right, cool. That's so not. <laughs> oh, that's gonna make me cry. I don't want to cry. I don't know why. It's just like why. It's like that. That like being asked that when there's literally nothing else for you to do but get in trouble. Like that's like a. You know what I'm saying? That made me feel good. A Cubs game. White Sox for White Sox! Let's walk in White Sox! Go Sox! Yeah! Fuck the Cubs, fuck the Orioles, fuck the Yankees, White Sox. White Sox! 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 They represent the South Side pride, that blue collar man. Like, the South Side's way better than the North Side. Never wear condoms unless you have to. <laughs> What's the situation in which you'd have to use a condom? Every time. Never! Never. <laughs> I'm married, What's so I haven't actually used condoms. I'm all right. I'm gonna just sit. I'm gonna just sit. I'm gonna sit back though. Let me come down. Let me come down. Let me come down. Are you crying, Sean? I need some water. Why does this keep falling? I need some water, bro. Oh, no, nah, that was always one of those ones. I appreciate the sub, man. Condoms in 15 years. Raw dog stats for Jack Harlow. Jack Harlow only. Sorry. Boss Top, what, what do you think about condoms? What I think about condoms? I got six kids right there. Raw dog, all day long. Jack Harlow is not my type. What makes White Sox fans different from other fans? Sometimes they wear white socks, but not on a regular basis. Loyalty. Why? Why? Are you guys from Chicago? No. No? no? Exactly. What do you think your most controversial opinion is? Like, what do you mean about that? For example, I believe that aliens have visited the United States of America. Nice. So do I. 
I also believe that the earth is not it. Let's Niggas just want to do some regular shit, bro. That's it. That's all. It's not round. I also believe that the government is hiding a lot of shit from us. I also believe that the government has taken over our, you know, our country. And like, you think the earth is flat for real? Huh? You think the earth is I flat? I mean, we have ideology, right? We have ideas. So, like, who, who are we to judge? White Sox hamburgers. Comiskey dog right here. We got two patties, two scoops of cheddar cheese, and we put the pico and the gaia on top. Say it ain't so, Joe. Hamburger, 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 hamburger. Man. I'm thirsty. Huh. I need to get a drink real quick. I'm guy. What's your biggest fear in the world? Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. How do you feel about the rapper Yeet? He's all right. Can you name, can, can you name five songs? Turban, mad about that, sorry about that. Money is so big and uh, what's it called, what's it called? Shit. What's your favorite thing about Yeet? It's the music. What would you say if Yeet was here right now? I don't know. What would you say if you could be digitally connected with Yeet in some form? Come oh on, my Yeet. god, Answer why does he still have his phone. phone number? God damn it. We love Yeet! We got, we made Yeet is never answering this dude's phone calls again. We actually made it here, guys. And Fucking drink to that. We are st like the epitome of sperm. And we are sperm at its best. You're a philosopher. I, 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 th I consider myself a philosopher, yes. You guys want to hear my whole philosophy? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, said he yeah. Write and still named four to five yeah. songs from him. <laughs> you guys watching this? What's this your, this is my philosophy. You just saw it happen. I didn't know that guy. I didn't. I, I could not associate with him of any particle of my own being. But I let him go through. Because he's a, he's a fellow human being, you know? So his agenda, you got to consider that. If he wanted to go through, it, it wasn't um, like... You, you was going to stop him? Like, uh, you know, like negatively imper imperative to me. So I let him through. That's what I think we should all do, you know? Try to fucking make it better for everybody. If you can. Different team might be the same team in the long run. We don't know. Maybe different teams right now could end up being on the same team. But, you know, right now, he's not on my team because I don't know who the hell he is. But we're both at the Sox game, so I guess we're not on the same team in that sense. I like that. I like the way that video ended. <sighs> Y'all go support him, cause I know this shit got demonetized. But that was a W vid. I can't like it, but you know what I'm. You know what I want to do. You know what I'm saying. You know what I want to do. Oh, <sighs> okay. 